Welcome back, everyone. Um, this is the introduction to zoology lecture. And um, yeah, so for the assignment that will be uh, turned in before Wednesday, you will just need to take notes on the basic groups that we're going to discuss in this lecture and then turn those in. So it's a pretty easy assignment, really just watching this video and getting down a few basic notes on the, uh, the groups of animals that we are going to discuss today. So um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about with you all today is um, just zoology in general. So zoology is the study of animals, of course. And we, we know this. Uh, prefix here, the zo, right? Z O in Latin refers to animals. So when we talk about anything that has to do with a, a zooplankton or something like that, it is a an animal of some kind. So it's a branch of biology that studies the animal kingdom, including the structure, embryology, evolution, and classification, habit, habits, and distribution of all animals, both living and extinct. So there is something called paleozoology, which is um, those that study ancient animals, most of them, of course, being extinct. And then there is the, the study of modern zoology of living um, animals. So today I wanted to talk about um, the two main groups really that I consider um, of animals and kind of breaking them down. So when we've talked about taxonomy, which is remember the classification of different animals, we can look at multiple different levels of taxonomic breakdown. And really one of the first levels of taxonomy that we look at is whether or not something has a backbone. So let's talk about the uh, the major groups of invertebrates and vertebrates. All right. So an invertebrate, as you will recall, is something without um, a backbone. Anything without a backbone is an invertebrate. So there are many, many examples of invertebrates. Um, we're going to talk about a few different groups that I think are some of the more interest, interesting ones. This is a very large group. Um, worms, jellies, sponges, all sorts of um, types of organisms that do not have backbones uh, live today. And we can talk about any number of these different groups, but I want to focus on just four different um, groups of invertebrates, and that, that's insects, arachnids, cephalopods, and crustaceans. And um, all of these different groups, of course, are part of the larger classification of invertebrate. So to start things off, I want to talk about insects. So we know about insects, right? In fact, we can see here on the invertebrate page, it has an example of an insect right here. So when we go through these groups, we're going to be talking about the kind of the defining characteristics of e each of them. Insects. Well, insects are anything with a um, an out outer shell, right? An outer shell with six appendages, six legs. And um, so they have an exoskeleton and six legs. So those are really the, the big, big parts. And then they have multiple body sections. Most of the time they have three body sections. That is a, um, a head, a, a torso of some kind, and then um, the, the rear section of the the uh, insect, which right now is the thorax and the abdomen. Yeah, there we go. Head, thorax, and the abdomen. For some reason, I couldn't remember those terms. So here we have a, um, a diagram here. 
head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And all insects have some form of this. All right. So if we look at any example of an insect, so let's look at a hornet. All right. So hornets have the th their abdomen here, the thorax is here, the head is here. And a similar organism being a bee. Bees have a head, the thorax, and the abdomen, right? But then there are other insects, like ants. Head, thorax, abdomen. So all of these insects have different um, three sections, and they all have six legs. Right. Um, their exoskeleton is hard. They don't have any internal skeleton. And they don't have blood as we as we do. Right. So blood is kind of um, um, something that is mostly for reptiles and amphibians and fish and mammals and so forth. There is a couple of invertebrates that have blood, but. Insects do not have blood. They have something called hemolymph. 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 Which is spelled like this. H H E M O L Y M P H. Who just joined us? Hello, Davis and Lynn. Glad you could drop in. I would recommend pulling up a, uh, a Google Doc or a notebook to take notes because you'll be turning in those notes for points this week. And feel free to unmute your microphone at any time to ask questions. So hemolymph um, is this right here. It's a fluid. It, in it's kind of like blood in invertebrates, in but it's, of course, in invertebrates. And these, here we have a grasshopper. Again, we see the grasshopper head, thorax, abdomen. They can have all sorts of different ratios of sizes of the different segments of their body, but they all have three body segments. So insects, the big thing that I want you to understand about insects, they have an exoskeleton. They have six legs. They have hemolymph and three body sections. And um, as far as insects go, they're, uh, they also have wings. Almost all species of insect has, has um, a set of wings at one point of time or another in their uh, developmental stages. Um, not all individuals have wings, but the species. So, for instance, not all ants develop wings, but the um, the drones that go and mate with other queens and so forth have wings. So, not every individual has wings, but just about every species, every species has a, a representative individual in some form or another that has wings. So three body segments, hemolymph, exoskeleton, six legs. All right. There's all sorts of different types, termites and beetles and so forth. Okay. Now on to the next group that I wanted to talk about, which may be a little bit unsettling to some of you, is arachnids. So arachnids are, are, of course, the spiders and scorpions and mites. So spiders, scorpions, mites, um, they are disconcerting for many people to look at. 
really what I want you to understand about them is that they have eight appendages, not six. There's some insects that look like arachnids, but they only have six legs. If it has six legs um, and three body sections, it is an insect. If it has eight legs and two body sections, okay, two body sections, then it is an arachnid. Arachnids, they have um, their eight legs connected to their main body segment. Okay. And the, uh, the opistoma, opistoma, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, so the thorax and then their, their abdomen. Okay. And you can see here kind of the, their body diagram. Interesting about um, arachnids, they also have hemolymph. Okay. They have hemolymph and arachnids and insects share that as well as the fact that they breathe through their skin. Um, so they don't have like lungs or anything like that. They they breathe through their skin. All right, and it's kind of, yeah, kind of like a book gill, they, they call it. So they don't have like internal lungs that expand and contract like, like we do. Same with insects. And they also don't have any, um, muscles they don't have any muscles that extend their their uh their joints and appendages they um very very interesting almost all arachnids use hydraulic movement okay so they they pump hemolymph into their limbs to extend them out and then when there is a lack of hemolymph they are kind of like a spring and it naturally comes back in. So they use the, uh, they use a hydraulic system to extend and contract their limbs. Pretty amazing. That's the reason why when you kill a spider, all of its legs curl up. Um, that is because their legs are constantly, they want to be curled up like that, but the, the way that they extend them is by pumping fluid kind of like blood, called hemolymph, into their exoskeleton. Very, very cool. So again, insects and arachnids have a lot in common, but they are quite different. They have hemolymph and an exoskeleton um, and a segmented body. However, insects have three segments, arachnids have two segments, insects have six legs, and arachnids have eight. All right, now we can move on. If there are no questions from the people watching live, which is precisely three of you, we can move on here and we can talk about cephalopods. So a cephalopod, cephalopods. Cephalopods are in invertebrates such as squid, cuttlefish, nautilus, and octopus. And these are the, the main groups of cephalopods. All of them have multiple appendages coming off of which is essentially their main or only body um, segment. You can see here the picture of a squid. Pretty cool. Has some bioluminescence going on. Cephalopods are fascinating. Really, really cool. They're very different from just about any other group of animal. They have, so their appendages, so you may have 
all heard of tentacles. Um, so tentacles have um, suckers just on the end, and but most of the appendages on cephalopods are actually arms. So if there is suckers all along the, the length of the appendage, that is an arm. Octopuses have eight arms. Um, squid have different varying numbers of arms versus tentacles. Um, uh, most squid have six arms and two tentacles. Ch um, chamber nautilus can have a lot of different arms and different tentacles. They can have like 90 some um, that all come off of this central, right here, this central area. And this is the shell of the Nautilus that you can see here. And then this is its um, jet locomotion. It's really interesting. Cephalopods are the only animals that we know of that use jet propulsion. They actually um, bring water into their heads and then shoot that water out of um, special orifice, orifices that um, that allow them to move. It's really cool. Um, jet propulsion cephalopod. 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 All right. So they're the only organisms that we know of that use jet propulsion. So these, this funnel here, really cool. Really cool stuff for sure. All right. Yeah. So they can, uh, hello, there we go. Um, they can, again, bring that water in, then shoot it out of a funnel and propel themselves. Fascinating organisms. They do not have any bones or any hard structures except for their beaks, which you can see here. This is their beak. Um, and they can, so because they have no hard port part of their body, they can fit through any um, passage that is wider than their beak. So a giant Pacific octopus, which is like the size of a, they can be several meters in diameter when they spread their arms out, can fit through a hole um, about the size of a, like a, like a silver dollar. So like this big, which this huge organism can fit through a tiny little hole. Um, it's pretty amazing how they uh, how they do that. All right, um, amazing organisms are cephalopods. They also are unique in that they have um, chromatophores, which are specialized cells that can change colors. So many cephalopods use colors to change their appearance for camouflage. They also, some of them use them for communication, which is really cool stuff. Um, I've told a story about watching cuttlefish fight in an aquarium where they will flash red and white at each other and to try and intimidate one another. It's pretty amazing. They just, they change the color white, red, white, red, white, red. Um, really awesome stuff. They also have a very complex nervous system and octopuses, which is the correct pluralization, by the way, not octopi. Octopuses have um, some of the highest intelligence levels of any organism um, that is not a mammal or bird. In fact, we might they might be the most intelligent non-human animal that we know of, which is pretty amazing um, because they have just a gazillion um, nerves and they have mo most of their brain tissue, most of their nerve tissue is actually in their arms. And so they have a whole bunch, they have a brain, a central brain, but they have a whole bunch of brain tissue in their arms as well. So it's pretty amazing. Very, very unusual. 
lot to know about them. So again, they have no bones. Um, they can change colors. They have arms or tentacles or both. And um, know the difference between arms and tentacles. Arms have suckers all along the length. Tentacles only have suckers at the end. Um, yeah, amazing creatures, cephalopods. If you want to learn more about cephalopods, I would definitely recommend um, checking out some resources um, on other places on the internet, uh, YouTube channels and so forth. Um, great video from a channel called Answers with Joe that just came out about cephalopods um, this week. So I would check it out. All right. Now the last group of invertebrates that I wanted to talk about were, were crustaceans. Crustaceans um, are, of course, things like crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and, and so forth. They are, um, again, they share quite a few similarities to insects. Um, they have an exoskeleton. They are, um, they're kind of just like big water bugs, kind of, but um, they, they branched off much, much longer ago than any other insects. Um, very cool. There's, it's a very, very diverse group lobsters, shrimps, crabs crawfish, all these different groups. Um, what I do want you to understand about crustaceans is that they are um, very, very important. Uh, krill are also um, crustaceans. Um, yeah, barnacles. So they're very important to the ocean ecosystem. Uh, krill, of course, feeds um, whales and so forth they are um yeah they're pretty amazing very very diverse they have multiple appendages they kind of vary in the number of, app of appendages almost all of them have larger appendages with claws at the end um and yeah that's really what I want you to understand about crustaceans, they're similar to insects, um, but very different in other ways. They have an exoskeleton, they have multiple appendages, two larger appendages, almost always with some sort of claw or um, grabbing mechanism, something like that. They have um, compound eyes, just like insects do. Um, so insects have, and Crustaceans have compound eyes, which are like clusters of eyes, right? That very simple eyes that all together make a, a complex um, image. Um, <clears throat> that's the difference between an, another difference between insects, crustaceans, and um, arachnids. Arachnids do not have compound eyes. Arachnids have um, eight fully formed. Um, camera, lens, eyes. Okay, so that, that really finishes up our invertebrates. I know that I didn't talk about the crustaceans much, but I did want to just mention them. So we need to quickly move through five groups of vertebrates. So vertebrates are anything with a backbone. Vertebrates have a backbone or a spine. The main groups that I'm going to talk about are the fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. All right. So the the main groups again Fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, birds. And we're going to just quickly move through all of these. Remember that all vertebrates have a backbone, a spine of some kind. 
most of them have appendages, um, four appendages, sure, remember, arms and legs. But not all of them have appendages like that. Eels and snakes, obviously, um, but also some types of fish do not have any um, appendages. They have ray fins, which are not appendages. So let's talk about the, the vertebrates, all right? First, I wanna talk about fish. So fish are a very diverse group, um, or rather fishes, I should say. They are a very diverse group, but they are characterized by a few things. They have gills, they live in the water, right? They, they don't have internal lungs, um, most of them. Mud skippers and so forth kind of have lungs, but they're not, not really. So fishes, which is the plural of when you're talking about multiple different types of fish. Fishes, um, they have gills, they live in the water, um, they have bilateral symmetry, right? Which is pretty much everything that we've talked about so far has bilateral symmetry. That may not seem super important, but it really is. Um, so they are symmetrical down a central line. So they have, um, yeah. And that is true of most vertebrates have are bilaterally symmetrical. They have a skeleton of some kind. Not all fish have calcified skeletons like we do. So our bones are calcified, um, which are true bones. Not all fish have bones. Um, sharks and rays have skeletons made out of cartilage, so, but they are fish. So sharks, rays, um, you know, all the different types of rayed fin fish, lobe fin fish, um, whale sharks, and so forth. All of these, um, you've got a huge variety of different kinds of fish going from the very, very largest, like the whale shark, to just tiny little fish. Um, but they all have gills, they all have skeletons of some kind, they have bilateral symmetry. Um, they are all, um, none of them can like photosynthesize or anything like that, which is true of just about everything that we've said so far. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's really as far as I wanna take it with fish. So anything with gills is a fish. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types, but I don't want to get into all, I mean, look at all these different classes and subclasses and phyla and all sorts of different groups of types of fish. Very, very diverse are fish. Okay. So that's fish. Now let's talk about amphibians. Amphibians. Amphibians are organisms that generally live on land, but spend much of their time in the water. So they also um, go through a metamorphosis stage. So like tadpoles to fish or uh, frogs, not fish, tadpoles to frogs. Um, this, this includes frogs, salamanders, Newts. Um, amphibians are very common all over the world. They are becoming less and less common, unfortunately. Um, very, very difficult time for amphibians with climate change and habitat destruction and all sorts of stuff. Um, they do not have gills. Um, they, they don't have gills like fish. Some Amphibians have external gills, like the axolotl 
Salamander, um, which is a Mexican exowaffle. Um, Mexican salamander. They're very cute. People really like them. They have external gills. And they they so they can they can these appendages off the side of their head are, are external gills, which is pretty cool. Amphibians like fish are cold blooded. So meaning that they depend on the outside to give them their warmth and heat. This is true of almost all fish, amphibians, and reptiles. So they cannot generate their own heat, or at least not keep their bodies at a constant temperature. Yeah, they're a fascinating group of, of organisms. They do have calcified bones. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. Here we go. Here's an axolotl again. You can see this. They also are very different in size, generally, the males and females. There you go. Black salamander. So salamanders, newts, frogs, anything like that is an amphibian. Now we can start talking about these organisms with four appendages, right? So all amphibians have four appendages. They are what we call tetrapods. Okay. So that's amphibians. Now over to reptiles. We're getting, we're getting close here. We're getting close. Reptiles are um, a little bit different from amphibians in that they have, um, they have eggs with hard shells. So amphibians have to lay their, their eggs in water. They cannot lay their eggs anywhere else. Their eggs are very, very soft. They're kind of like just a, um, like a sack of jello, right? Reptiles have hard casings around their eggs, and they generally have a much more um, scaly, uh, scaled exterior, and so they can live away from the water. Not all of them do. Some reptiles live in the water, for instance, sea turtles and so forth but they are able to um, go out of the water for long periods of time because they have a thick outer skin that keeps the water in. Unlike amphibians whose skin is super thin and they dry out easily and if they dry out, then they're, they're goners, okay? So reptiles, this is lizards, snakes, turtles, tortoises, crocodilians, very diverse group of organisms. They are, again, all tetrapods. They all have four limbs, except for the organisms that have lost their limbs, like snakes and legless lizards, which are super weird to look at. If you haven't seen a legless lizard, they're super weird. Yeah, I mean, look at this weirdo. It really does just look like a, a lizard. Somebody took the, <laughs> I mean, look at this head. Yeah, this is a legless lizard, which is not a snake. It looks like a snake, but it isn't. It is a completely different type of animal. So um, yeah, turtles, crocodilian snakes, lizards, tortoises, all right, so, when we, um, geckos and all of this, fascinating group of, of organisms. So, so again, going back to amphibians, amphibians have soft shelled eggs. The reptiles have thick shells on their eggs that can be laid on land or in the water. Most of the time, reptiles lay their eggs on land. They are tetrapods. They have thick scaly skin that allows them to, to get away from the water. Reptiles were the first organisms, um, first tetrapods, so large 
four-legged organisms to venture away from the water. Insects had come onto land before that, but then reptiles um, evolved from am amphibians in order to be away from the, the water in forests and um, deserts and so forth. Reptiles really, really do well right now in desert locales um, because they don't have to eat a lot. Again, they are exotherms, meaning that they are cold-blooded. And so they don't need a whole bunch of food because a lot of the food that we eat really just goes to keeping our body warm. So um, they don't have to do that. They rely on their outside temperature to keep them warm. And so they are able to survive in desert areas much better than many mammals and birds and so forth. That is reptiles. Second to last group here, mammals. We've talked about these at length, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. That This group, of course, includes us, organisms that have hair, that produce milk, and are warm-blooded. So everything up to now has been cold-blooded, so it depends on the exterior temperature. So amphibians, reptiles, arth arthropods, which are the, the insects, arachnids, um, fishes, almost all of these organisms are cold-blooded. Now we get into warm-blooded organisms. These are mammals. All right. So again, they have, they have hair, they produce milk, and they are warm-blooded. Most people would say that mammals give live birth. Not all mammals give live birth. Um, remember that the platypus and the echidna, they lay eggs. Um, but they are mammals. They have fur and they produce milk. So, yeah. And this is a very diverse group, again, going from bats, which are very, very small and can fly, to whales, dolphins. So whales, dolphins, the, the, the apes, including humans, um, dogs, cats, um, marsupials like kangaroos and wombats and so forth, all mammals. So defining characteristics of mammals, again, fur, milk, and warm-blooded. And then our last group are the birds, which if you have not seen the movie The Birds, you can if you want. A lot of people love that movie. I don't get it. It's kind of weird, weird movie. Um, so the birds. Birds are organisms that are warm-blooded and they lay eggs and they have feathers. So there are many different types of birds, um, everything from hummingbird to a pigeon to an ostrich and penguins, all birds. They are again, tetrapods, so they have four limbs. They're covered in feathers, they're warm blooded, they lay eggs. Um, yeah, fascinating organisms are birds. They're very, very famous for their ability to fly. Not all of them can fly. None of the penguin family can fly. Ostriches, emus, um, kiwis, many different types of birds are unable to fly, but most of them, most species of bird can fly. All right. Um, they also have a beak instead of any um, like jaw. They don't have a true jaw. They have a beak instead. They are, um, yeah. Again, covered in feathers, warm blooded. Most of them can fly. Feathers probably actually did not develop in order to fly. The feathers probably developed first to just keep their bodies warm because they were warm blooded. They needed some sort of covering. Mammals developed fur to keep us warm. Birds developed feathers. So feathers and fur actually serve a very similar purpose. 
um, to keep the body warm. But birds then use those feathers because they're so lightweight and they can become so long. Then they develop them into um, flying uh, mechanisms, flying uh, parts of their body. So feathers probably didn't develop until after um, not, they did not develop in order for flight. They actually developed to keep the body warm and then eventually started, birds started using their feathers for flight. So those are the, the main groups that I wanted to talk about. So in summary, insects have three section bodies, six limbs, hemolymph. Arachnids have two section bodies, eight limbs. Um, hemolymph as well. Insects and arachnids have different types of eyes. Insects have compound eyes. Arachnids have um, fully formed um, camera pinhole eyes. Um, yeah. Cephalopods are squids, octopuses, nautilus, and um, cuttlefish. They can change color. They have no exoskeleton or skeleton, they just have a beak. Um, they have tentacles and arms, they're very intelligent. Crustaceans are crabs, lobsters, crayfish, um, crawdads, shrimps, uh, have an exoskeleton. They have um, very different numbers of appendages, but they almost all have larger front appendages with claws. And then the vertebrates, so fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds, they'll have backbones and are bilaterally sym symmetrical. Fishes have gills um, and are in the water. Amphibians might have gills but are tied to the water because they have to lay eggs in water because their eggs are so soft. Um, reptiles lay hard eggs and they have a hard scaly exterior. Mammals have hair, produce milk, and are warm-blooded, unlike every other type of organism that we just talked about. Birds are also warm-blooded, covered in feathers, and lay hard eggs. All right, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Those nine groups, so you should have notes on all of these, really the assignment is to just take notes on what we discussed here. And then I want you to make a quick summary at the very end of the differences, the main differences that, that you saw and things that you found interesting. So main differences that you saw, maybe it was the, the cold bloodedness or the exoskeleton, something that kind of caught your attention and then something that you thought was interesting that you learned. All right, we will leave it at that. And thanks for tuning in, and I will talk to you a different time.